going through starting uh, a different different chapter. We'll be doing the gospel letter sessions. So starting from today, what are we doing? We've been trying to equip ourselves with the understanding of the basis of the gospel. And now we're saying, let us really equip ourselves for evangelism, evangelism, okay? To, equip, to be equipped with evangelism, to be used by God, to spreading the gospel to the world, okay? We'll be going through that uh, starting from tonight. And Amber, Amber, I'm gonna ask you to pray after we sing, okay? So just to let you know a little bit ahead of time, so you don't faint when I call your name. <laughs> Uh, so with that said, um, Jinzo, can you take a picture and uh, post this? I will post the lyrics in our Kako room right now, or Jinzo will do it right now. We're going to be singing, let us sing of his love. Let us sing of the love of Jesus Christ. Right? Every time when you sing the songs, make it your true prayer and a confession. Okay? So as soon as he posts it, is ready, we will begin. We good? All right, let's sing this. The lyrics is in the Kako room, okay? Now let us sing of his love. Let us sing of his love once again, of the love that can never decay, of the blood of the lamb newly slain. Till we praise him again in that day And I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow Cleansing and healing for all Who have washed in the life-giving flood There is life everlasting and joy at the right hand of God through the blood and I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow and I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow and Then we'll march in his name till we come That is beating to enter our rest And the Father shall welcome us home to a place in the realms of the blessed and I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow So with banner unfurled to the breeze And I would motto shall holiness be To the crown at his hand we shall seize and the King in His glory we see And I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than I believe Jesus I believe Jesus saves And this blood makes me whiter than snow And I believe Jesus saves and this blood makes me whiter than snow And this blood makes me whiter than snow And this blood makes me whiter than snow The perfect blood of Jesus Christ makes us whiter than snow. I hope you hold to that confession. At this time, Amber, would you let you are the honor and pray for us? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for sending your uh, Son, only Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit as we are going to hear the message that Pastor Tom is going to give. I pray that you will break down the forces of darkness and bind Satan who might hinder us from enjoying the message you have for us today. I pray that we will take this message and use it in our field, in our workplace, school, and throughout the areas that you send us. I pray that we'll all be used for your true evangelism movement and to save the 237 nations 
And I pray that we will all be used to raise the remnant. And we pray this in your wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amber, for praying for us. Um, and as you pray, I pray that all of us truly be used uh, to save uh, the field, uh, to those who are dying in the field. Amen. Um, so today, from starting from tonight, we'll be going through the gospel letters, gospel letters. Um, you know, how many times do you think I've done gospel letters? I, mean, I don't know, somebody can guess how many times I've done gospel letters. I can't even count how many times I've done gospel letters. I've lost count, right? Um, that's not what's important, but the point I'm trying to make is we really, really, we need to personalize the materials uh, that are in the gospel letters. Gospel, we're good news. You know, gospel, we're, we're, we're out there proclaiming the good news. So, to, I, I'm, so I'm going to be giving the gospel in terms of teaching you, in terms of equipping you as leaders who can then do the gospel to others um, to proclaim the gospel. So uh, with that mindset, I'll be uh, speaking tonight. Let me share the screen. Okay. All right. Okay. Everybody good? All right. So today we're looking at the gospel letter. Uh, lecture one is why are people unhappy? Uh, the gospel letters are set up so that the titles are a question format, question format. The answers are the verse. Answers are the verse. And the to the question, why are people unhappy? The answer given from the Bible, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and what? Fall short of the glory of God. And that's the answer. So before we even go into the main content, one of the things that we need to establish first before you begin is to let that person understand the kind of person that you are, right? Uh, we need to have this kind of trust understanding, right? You need the, the, the listener has to be able to trust the, the speaker, the person evangelizing, right? And the best way to do that in the shortest amount of time, right? I guess you can spend time and talk about your entire life, but the shortest amount of time, the best way to do that is sharing your testimony, testimony, right? So before I even enter into the content, I always test, share my testimony. And the testimony is when you have to be, always be careful of your testimony, your testimony should never sound like I done A, B, and C, and then God gave me this kind of answer, okay? Your testimony should never be a method-based. I did 40 nights of prayer, and God changed my life. Those are wrong testimonies. I've done so many things at the church, so God bless me. Wrong testimony. I'm so smart, so I was able to do these so many things in my life, so God bless me. Wrong testimony. Our testimony must be above the grace of God. Where you could not do, God made it happen by his grace. Do you understand, right? Our testimony shows the work of God in our life. Nothing more, nothing less. You should not be the center of your testimony. So when you share testimonies, be careful. Don't talk about this amazing answer you received and the person listening thinking, well, I can't receive that kind of answer. I'm not you, right? The answer should be, it doesn't matter who you are. When God works, it is possible. That's the kind of testimony that we must have. So I always share about how my life was before I knew God. And then I share about how my life changed after I knew God, right? The change portion, of course, was the gospel, which was impossible for me to change. How I was before, how I tried to change, nothing worked. And I received the gospel. And then that gospel gave me healing and the change that I could not do on my own, right? That's usually the, the content of my testimony. And, and, you know, I usually share about, you know, my family issues and the scars that I had and the issues and worries that I used to have and how gospel changed that, gave me healing, and I became a new person, right? New direction. That's the kind of evidence that I had, and I share that. And, uh, and another thing you should keep in mind when you, when you are leading the gospel letters um, don't make a gospel letter for like an hour long. Right? It shouldn't, it shouldn't, gospel letter session shouldn't be an hour, two hour session. It should be 30 minutes at the most, 30 minutes at the most, if you're leading the message. Okay. 
that means it's always harder, it's more difficult to organize important contents in a shorter amount of time. You cannot do it unless it's organized, organized, right? When you're not organized, you start talking about this, you start talking about that, and the content goes on and on and on, right? We need to make it simple for the people that are in the field. So the point being, uh, matched, the point should be matched on unhappiness, unhappiness, because that's what we're talking about. Why are people unhappy? So th talk about how you were unhappy, how you tried to find happiness on your own, how you could not achieve it on your own. And we're going to talk about why that is, and you go into the main content. Okay. So why are people unhappy? And from the beginning, we give the answer. Why are people unhappy? Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right? For who sinned? All have sinned. Not just anybody, all sinned. Not just some people, but all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the introductory question, uh, the statement goes like this. What is the reason why people who should be happy are unable to find happiness and are instead living in suffering? Some people are afflicted by family, health, financial, mental problems, and the like. Unable to find happiness, they turn to drinking, gambling, dancing, or loose living, only to become more unhappy. What is the reason? The point being, people want to be happy. There's nobody in this world who was born who wants to be unhappy. I'm going to live a very unhappy life. No, everybody is doing their best to achieve happiness. And yet, why is it so hard to achieve? Why is it so hard to get? And because they don't get it, they turn to these issues and problems. They turn to drinking, gambling, right? So drinking and gambling isn't the problem that you should need to solve. They became this way because they're unhappy in their search of happiness they could not find it and the source and a way out became dancing loose drinking and gambling and such what have you so we need to understand the reason of why this is and the reason from the beginning the reason we have to understand is this the the, the verse right back then was right romans 3 23 for all of sin all show the glory of god and this is what we are expounding on right all short of the all have sinned. We're going to talk about what that sin is and what it means to be fall short to the glory of God. Meaning, no matter what you do, you cannot go to the presence of God, right? No matter how much you try, you will always fall short. I talk about this, right? Somebody's falling off a cliff and you're trying to save him and you, 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 you fell short. You fell short of grabbing the person's hand and he dies. Falling short and saving somebody's life is never good enough. You can say, I tried my best. Well, your best will never be good enough. That's the state of mankind. And that's what we'll be talking about today. And the answer from the beginning, every gospel letter you have to set is what? This very key understanding. Why are people suffering? Why is there no happiness? Why? Number one, it is because people are separated from God. Separated from God. Where are people looking for their happiness? Where, what, you know, have you ever, have they ever tried to pinpoint to their unhappiness, right? Ever talk to people who are depressed? Ever talk to, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of teenagers when I was in my ministry who are bipolar at their young age. And when you talk to these people, they always talk about their scars. Well, it's something their mom did to them, something their father, you know, some event that really scarred them. And they're stuck in that state in that mind, in that scar, and they can't get away from it. And any, anything's like, you know, they have such a hatred because of that scar. Now, can they change that past event? No, they cannot. That event that took place cannot be changed, right? So does that mean then there's no hope for them? There's no hope for them. The hope is helping them to understand it's not because of that event but what is it? Their pain and suffering is not because of that event, but their pain and suffering is because they're separated from God. That's what they need to understand, okay? Without understanding this, there is no healing. There's no healing. You can't change the past, right? You can't change what happened, but what you can do is understand the power of God, right? Understand the source of understanding, the source of pain for all mankind, for all problems, then we will come to the right answer 
the healing will then truly take place. People are separated from God. So what does that mean? Due to their disobedience, they became ignorant of God. Who are they? Adam and Eve, the first two representatives of mankind. What did they do? They disobey God. Hence, reason being, all of us now are affected by the sin of Adam. Okay? They became ignorant of God. They don't know God anymore. People who are born, are they don't know God anymore. They're separated from God. As a result, they fell into a what? State of sin. Like I say, I pointed this out many times in our training. We're not a, a, you know, you didn't sin, not just sin. No, as a result, they fell into a state of sin. That's a very important point, state of sin. That the very being of who you are is in a state of sin. You're not a sinner because you're constantly sinning. No, the very fact that you're alive is a sin itself before God. We are a state of, we are in a state of sin, right? They fell into all kinds of suffering. Why? Because sin brings curse. Sin brings condemnation. Sin brings suffering. What kind of suffering? Mentally. Mentally, people are suffering, right? So which Jesus says, come all you weary and heavy burden, come to me and I'll give you rest, Jesus says, because there is no rest apart from Christ. What's the title of our training, guys? Rest, rest. Restoration of essential spiritual training, spiritual time. You know, that's what we're doing. We were trying to find rest in the presence of God as we focus on the word of God. Because they fell away from God, they have suffering. What kind? Mentally. In their mind, there is no, no answer. As they see the issues and the problems, no answer. So they suffer mentally. Not just people who are in the mental institute are mentally ill. No, we are all mentally ill because we are suffering mentally in our mind. So therefore that leads us to a certain lifestyle, which is worthless, which is a very unbalanced life. When you look at somebody and go, why do you live like that? Why, why, how can a person live like that when we, what's the answer? They're suffering mentally. They're suffering spiritually. Because why? They're in a state of sin, separated from God. That is why. And of course, that kind of lifestyle leads to a physical suffering. And the root cause is not physical, not uh, a, a condition upon some, some event while it triggered that, that pain, but the root cause is a spiritual problem, spiritual problem. And what do I mean by spiritual problem? Separation from God, right? You no longer belong to God. You are in a state of sin. Satan holds your life. Why is there so much pain, guys? We have to understand that all pain, I don't care what kind of pain it is, God did not create you to be in pain. That's not God's plan, guys. All pain came because we separated from God. That's the conclusion you need to come to. Do you hate somebody? Do you have a scar from somebody? Is there a terrible event that they scarred you? You know, you will not receive healing until you understand this point. That suffering comes because of my separation from God, not anything else. What's the opposite sense then? If I truly enjoy the blessing of Emmanuel, blessing of with, I can overcome all suffering. That's what that means. I can overcome mentally. I can overcome physical, emotional, all issues and problems in my life. When you are enjoying the blessing of with Emmanuel, that's the power that we have. But that's been lost. That's been lost. So to find solutions, what do people do? They turn to superstition and religion. They try all these different things in hopes to find their answer. So what is religion, guys? Religion is what? Like I said, is me searching for God. That is religion, right? Religion, as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? They realized that they were naked, right? Before, they didn't, nakedness was not a problem for them, right? But now after sin, their physical eyes are so bright. You see their nakedness, they're embarrassed. When they hear, you know, and what do they do? They make uh, clothing out of leads, right? Um, that is the start of religion, guys. They see a problem and they try to resolve it. That's the, that's the start of religion, okay? So, number two. So, we talked about what? We talked about why people are suffering because they're separated from God. And secondly, then the Bible tells us when this unhappiness began. When did it begin? It began. Uh, with the very uh, during the first time 
of Adam and Eve, mankind, first Adam and Eve, first created, right? It didn't even take that long, right? Creation took place, Adam and Eve comes into the, uh, into the scene, and bam, right away, Satan enters, and deceives Adam and Eve into sinning against God. So the root cause, right, what is it? Sinned by disobeying the word of God, disobeying the word of God, right? Sin, hamartia, hamartia, right? The little Greek word from the uh, uh, the Hebrew word, and then the meaning is to miss the mark. That's the meaning of the word sin. Sin isn't doing something bad. That's not the meaning of the word. The meaning of the word of sin, hamartia, is missing the mark. Who sets the mark? God sets the mark. The word of God. This is the mark. Do and don't on the word of God. And yet Satan comes along. Hey, no, no, no. You're not going to die. You can eat from it. You're going to gain knowledge of good and evil. You're going to be like God. Deception. They believed in the words of Satan. They disobeyed. Disbelief. Unbelief took place in their heart. They believed in the words of Satan. And as a result, they missed the mark. That's called sin. Original sin. As a result, they fell into suffering and curse. It's the beginning of the suffering of mankind. Can you point can you point to your scar and connect to this issue? Then you will find the answer in your life. That's what I saw in my life. I saw, I thought I was complaining about my parents, about my family, and yet I realized this. I thought I had the worst parents. I thought I was at the worst family. Oh, you know what, I, what the, my issue was? Separation from God. No longer I try to find answers from my parents. No longer I try to change my past anymore. I found from the answer from the gospel. Understand? That's the power of the gospel, guys. So how long will this unhappiness last, guys? How long? It continues now. It doesn't go away, right? Um, however times you try to resolve this problem, it doesn't go away, right? What happened? It continually increases. Not only does it increase, it gets worse in spite of our endeavor trying to solve the problem, right? It says in Matthew 12, 43 to 45, it says, dear, let me read it for you guys. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes to an arid place seeking rest and do not find it. When it says, I will return to the house I left, when it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept, clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes it with seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. What is that verse saying, guys? That verse is telling us how a man tries to resolve the issues in his life religiously, right? Swept and clean. He's talking about his own effort into trying to change his life. Well, the evil spirit who left could not find a place and says, yeah, I'm going to go back to that old place I used to hang out. And goes back and finds it what? Swept and cleaned. And what does he do? Hey, party over here, guys. We have a nice, clean, swept house. Let's go and have fun. He brings seven more evil spirits and enters the house. What happened to that person's condition? Seven times worse. That's what happened. No matter how much you try to solve it, it doesn't work. It's worse and worse and worse. That's the effort of mankind we talked about in the way of salvation. Your efforts will never be good enough. Romans 3.23, you will always fall short to the glory of God. You will always fall short. It's just like putting a Band-Aid over a gashing wound. It's not going to be enough, guys. You need to go to the hospital, get that stitched up, right? Putting a small Band-Aid isn't going to resolve your problem. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. How long will this unhappiness last? So number four then, then why doesn't this unhappiness go away? Why? Because there's a being who brings us happiness. Delivery man. There's a delivery man. I don't care the kind of person that you are. You know what I've seen? Uh, I've seen people who, have, who are with a nicer characteristic or who don't know the gospel are more prone to be really be deceived by Satan. I've seen that many times. People, it doesn't matter. If you consider yourself a nice person, and if you don't know the gospel, you're in trouble. I mean, I guess you're in trouble whether or not. If you don't know the gospel, you're in trouble. But there's a being who brings you unhappiness. Unhappiness. He brings it to you. 
right? You could be in the remote island. He will bring it to you, right? You could be, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter of your identity. It doesn't matter of your position. He brings you unhappiness. The Bible reveals his name as what? Satan, the devil, and the demon, right? And he is the father of lies. He is the main role of dividing people, right? deceiving people. That's what he's good at. And what does the Bible say about this, this being, right? Lucifer, as his name is, an angel became corrupt uh, in heaven. Refer go to the reference of these verses. It will talk about who Satan really is, right? An angel became corrupt. He thought he was this glowing, you know, you know, like this showpiece kind of, showroom piece kind of uh, car. You know what I mean? When you go to a car show, you see this nice blinging cars that are in the show, that's spinning. That's the kind of, you know, imagery of Satan, <clears throat> uh, angel that, that Satan was. Well, what happened? He became arrogant, right? What? I want to be in the throne of God, right? I want to be praised like God. So what happened? He was thrown into the air, right? His arrogance, his, his disbelief, it was thrown into the air. And when he was thrown into the air, he whipped his tail and took one third of the stars with him, the Bible says. And one third of the stars represent other fallen angels. So one third of the fallen angels who became corrupt was thrown into the air. Now this event we just read about, this took place already and, and ain't Satan was already at present when? When Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden. So that event took place already, right? This event of angels' corruption, the fallen angels that had already taken place, he was there waiting for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He appears on earth to do what? To destroy people. Destroy people meaning what? To continually deceive people. To not know who God truly is. Right? If you understand God, if you believe and accept that Jesus is right, and you go to church, well, he will make sure you do not enjoy your identity. Okay? So that he will make sure that you don't live for the sake of the gospel, but you live for yourself. That's how Satan will deceive you. And eventually, he will go to hell so hell is a place that i created for satan and his angels right satan and his minions right so those who follow became children of satan and now also end up in hell right? but what uh, happens if you don't know god what happens guys what happens is that it's just this simple choice of what you like and what you don't like is it such a big problem whether you know god or not what happens spiritual problems will come Spiritual problem, you know, let me give you a simpler explanation. Spiritual problem. What's spiritual problem? You don't have an answer for. That's a spiritual problem. Spiritual problem is something you cannot resolve physically. That's a spiritual problem. For example, if I have a broken arm, I have an arm broken physical issue, what do I do? I go to a hospital. I get it fixed. Get some screws in there. Get surgery. Put a cast on and I'm good to go. It'll, it'll, it'll heal up. Spiritual problem. It doesn't have such thing. There's no medicine you can take. There's no doctor that can resolve it. There's no physical remedy for a spiritual problem. It just doesn't exist in this world, right? The way you are, that that problem that is seeking, that try to always bring you down. There is no physical answer for that problem that you have, that spiritual problem that you have. It appears very differently to different types of people, right? Because we are all different, raised differently. So therefore, people suffer without even knowing the true reason. They have no happiness. They have no peace in their heart. Can you think about the old peace in your heart? That's a painful state to be in, okay? In your heartache, heartache in your scars and your suffering, having no peace in your heart. Nothing but problems and issues. That leads to a person suffering physically. Mental suffering. And ultimately, they end up in hell. So let me summarize what happened. They live a life like hell. And what happened? They go to hell for eternity. And of course, it's not recorded here in this verse. You have to understand that when the gospel first came out, Pastor Yu was still working on the six states of non-believer. So one of the things that we understand that we have another point here is that the relaying of the inheritance, spiritual inheritance to our future generation. Right? So not only do I live a life like hell, and I die, and I go to hell for eternity, no, but I get to relay that curse 
down to my children after children after children. That's the kind of suffering that comes if you do not know God, right? The peace you get in this world from others is only momentary, temporary, right? It's worldly, it's carnal, it's only for pleasure that lasts only for a minute. It does not resolve anything. It's not a, it's, all, it's like I said, putting a Band-Aid over a gashing wound. It doesn't fix anything, right? And that's the false hope people have. People are in this world trying to find some kind of satisfaction in the, in the momentary things thinking that it's going to somehow help them, right? They are absolutely lost in their search for the gospel, guys. So how important are you? <clears throat> Ultimately, it causes greater unhappiness in their life. So in the, today's teaching, right, why are people unhappy? The conclusion of not knowing God, meaning what? They're lost completely, forever. No answer will be found amongst them if you, they don't know the gospel. Do you understand? How important are you as a messenger who can carry the happiness, the good news of the gospel, this happiness of the gospel to the field? How important are you? As God sees you, you are the most precious, precious being on earth. You may not be the smartest person in your workplace. You may not be the most influential person where you are, but God sees you as the most important, precious person. Why? Because you're the only one who can bring about true happiness. Because you can proclaim the gospel. That's why. Understand your amazing identity that God has. God wants to use you to bring about true happiness. So as the title goes, why are people unhappy? Simple answer, separation from God. So think about this. One of the key questions I always help them to end is, what, what area in your life are you not happy with? What area in your life are you not happy? Are you so unhappy? And the answer is what? Find Emmanuel in that area. Find the blessing of God being with you in that area. The only way we can find true happiness. So uh, we've been given God's method, God's plan for happiness. So you enjoy it to the fullest so that you can relay this amazing answer to the people around you. Uh, that God will use you to bring about this true happiness, okay? Uh, uh, I'm going to be posting the mission later on, uh, but we're going to be having evangelism missions from now on, okay? So keep that in mind. As we've been praying, uh, we've, we've got, I, I've asked you for the five prayer topics, right? You're praying for yourself, praying for the meetings for the five people. You're praying for your family. You're praying for your work. You're praying for church. Five areas of prayer topics I told you right now. Guess what you're supposed to do with those prayer topics now, guys? Pray with it, okay? So every time you say, I'm going to pray, take out those five lists of prayer topics and simply read it. Read it and pray. Before you pray for anything else, pray for that first, okay? Pray that prayer first, and then whatever else you need to pray for, then go in. Every time you say you're going to pray, I want you to pray that five prayer first, Okay? To a point you would almost memorize it. To a point you won't even have to look at it anymore. Why? Because it's your prayer topic, right? You don't even you don't have to try to memorize it. At that point, I want you to utilize those prayers and make it your own. Okay? You can change along the way, but continue to pray with those five uh, prayer topics. Uh, prepare yourself and be used for evangelism. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining in, and uh, I'll see you early tomorrow morning. After this, uh, join with your forum groups. Have a quick forum. Uh, and then uh, I'll see you all in the morning, guys, okay? Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the amazing gospel message you've given to us, Father. Thank you that you have given us the method of the true happiness. Help us to stand as the witness of true happiness that is given through your son, Jesus Christ, so that we can go to the field proclaiming the gospel of, you, of Jesus Christ that you've given, bring about true happiness to those who are suffering out there in the field, Father. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the great love of the Father and the indwelling God is working of the Holy Spirit be upon us of all of our disciples that are gathered here, upon their family, upon their workplace, in their school, and upon the church that they serve, who will bring about the message of the gospel message that brings true happiness in their life in raising true disciples who glorify you. Be now together always and forevermore. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, thank you for joining in.
Uh, see you early tomorrow morning. Hope you guys are continuously being strengthened as you enjoy rest. Okay, guys? All right, guys. Thank you. I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.